7-Eleven now. For veterans coming back from war situations in Iraq and Afghanistan, many deal with post-traumatic stress disorder. It's very difficult. Servicemen and women who have seen terrible things in battle often have a hard time dealing with the adjustment to being home. Some veterans here in Connecticut have found unique ways of healing with art. And joining us this morning, three combat veterans, all U.S. Army veterans, to talk about how they've overcome PTSD. So please welcome Mike Hawley, Matt McDonald, Am I getting these right? Okay, and Al Kim uh, in order there. Okay, and guys, uh, we'll start with you, Mike. Can you, for those unfamiliar, talk a little bit about PTSD and what it is? P PTSD is uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, mm. and that can come from anything from combat to a car crash to uh, rape or um, uh, a, a violent violence, situation. Violent situation. So it isn't. Ne it, we often hear it associated with military uh, personnel, but it's it can happen to anybody, anybody. depending on the circumstance. Yes, right? it can happen to anybody, and it its symptoms include depression, anger, anxiety, uh, stress. Uh, Isolation. Uh, violence, isolation. isolation. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, interesting. And a, and a lot of, uh, uh, how prevalent is it among, and I'm sure we can't necessarily pull a number out of thin air, but, but can you give some idea of, of how prevalent it is for servicemen and women coming back from these situations overseas? We've seen statistics anywhere from the low end of, you know, 10, 15 percent of military veterans coming back from Iraq or Afghanistan, but it, it, Honestly, can reach upwards of 50 or 60 percent if you add depression, PTSD, TBI, all in together. And I would especially assume that those numbers have to be spiking for people who are on the front lines and and out in the line of fire, uh, literally or figuratively, on a daily basis, as you know, in the in the streets of say Kabul or or wherever they may be overseas these days. And I don't I don't want to make you guys try to relive what you've gone through and what you've seen. But I, let's talk about some of the ways that you have turned to artwork as one mode of therapy, um, in, 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 in addition to others, I would imagine, in terms of coping. And you, Mike, you are a photographer, is that yeah, right? I, uh, I fancy myself a writer, but I haven't really tried to publish anything. Uh, That's I, all right. I pick up a camera, I take pictures of whatever I see. Um, and occasionally we do art shows to uh, sell or promote our foundation. And we have some pictures, I believe, of your material here to, uh, to show up here. And if we can talk a little bit about the types of photos. Do we happen to show actually on the screen or do we, uh, or just in the hard <coughs> copy here? Or if maybe we can hold them up, some of the some I was going to say. Work. Okay. Yeah. Or, okay. Very good. Um, so talk a little bit about what some of your favorite subjects are photographically. Uh, some of my favorite subjects are anything pretty much in nature, anything that mm -hmm. strikes you. Uh, this is from Glastonbury, England at the Chalice Well Gardens. Uh, it's so down the hill from where I proposed to my fiance. Wow. Uh, it's just, I found it beautiful, like the, the flowers and the, uh, the uh, waterfalls. Beautiful spot. Yeah. And, and it, how did you accidentally or deliberately discover that, uh, that photography helped you in terms of post-traumatic stress? Uh, pretty much accidentally. I, I just started taking pictures and uh, you know, I found that just being out in nature, away from people, uh, Immersed in beauty, just helped me calm down, relax. It was meditative for me. Isn't that true? Nature always can help us bring back to peace. I mean, nobody likes being in a tornado, but <laughs> but nature uh, can, in a peaceful situation, peaceful place and moment, uh, can be very therapeutic. Isn't that of right? Uh, okay, thank you. And and Matt, you are a poet, so you've uh, you've written some poetry. Did you have it in you before, or did you sort of discover that as well? Uh, I'd say I had it in me before, but. Um... Uh, one thing, you, you know, mentioning the statistics and PTSD, it affects everybody. And there's, there's uh, very few of us that are able to just talk about it openly. So poetry is a way to say things that you can't normally say and, and to convey them uh, just, just in a different way, which it allows you to actually express what, what you've been through. Isn't that interesting? Can you, can you read a little bit of what you have for Sure, us? I have a real brief one, and actually it's uh, based on... Uh, how it might have sounded in the news the uh, day I got injured. Uh, uh, January 11, 2005, I was injured in a uh, massive uh, suicide bombing. So it goes like this, V-bed, two dead. In other news, in other news, earlier today, a vehicle born improvised explosive device exploded, go figure, in the crowded streets of Samara. Although no service members were killed, at least one was, was wounded, and his mother was called and once all year to tell her just that. Sadly, however, two civilians were killed in the attack. One was a child, and the other, as for him, well, let's just say he was the device. Wow. 
And isn't that interesting? A different mode of communication helps to open that up for you. And not to rush through things, but just because of, of time. Al, can you talk about, about your pho uh, photography? Yes, as well. As well. Uh, I want to going into it, unlike Mike, where he, he actually gets in the area of nature and the spirituality. I found photography being grounding at the fact that I'm into the process of the moment. So my subject matter is varied. Uh, I range everything from landscapes, uh, editorial, as well as portraiture. Yeah. And the irony of all is that I'm very much into portraiture. The tragedy is I don't have a whole lot of time to do portraiture and it just absolutely kills me. However, the effort to get in there to make, uh, to actually get into that moment, to make the arrangements, the intricacies, the, the setup, the details, uh, is what kind of grounds me. The free-for-all when it comes down to things like that Buddha head or the, uh, the landscape here is when I'm actually within that moment and I realize there's a, there's a single, singular second there and I make an effort just to grab that one particular moment. I know every moment's passing and I just want to every so often freeze one just for posterity's sake. So, and again, that's how I wind up grounding, my, grounding myself you know, through that art form. Well, I, we've got to go. Guys, thank you so much. We could probably talk a multitude about this, but Mike, Matt, Al, thank you, yeah, not thank only you. For, for sharing this, but also for what you've done for all of us thank Americans. Thank, thank you so much, much for being with.